this is what I like to do. You know, this is uh, what makes me happy. You know, if I don't make, if, if I don't sign another contract in my career, so be it. I'm, I'm, I'm completely happy with rolling around in the, in, at the outlaw mud shows with some of these, these either wacky names or great, great names of the past. Love it. This is, this is everything I could have dreamed of. Well, since you brought it up, I do want to ask, uh, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but there are reports out there that say that your AEW contract is up May 2022. If that's incorrect, you can let me know. But uh, with that being said, is that something that you're interested in? Is you know, Would you like to re-sign with AEW if given the opportunity? I said, I've been saying, I said in a couple interviews with Sean in September, that was all out weekend, I believe. I said, yes, uh, as recent as the interview of Barstool Sports, I said, yes, uh, my contract's up on May 1st, and I'm going to have to say no now. I'm not interested in signing with AEW, uh, re-signing with them. Um, it was a little ner- – I, I, I was a little scared getting back into the independent wrestling world and making money. Uh, it's so – you take those things for granted. You're getting a paycheck every two weeks, a pretty good paycheck. And in your head, you're like, shit, when this is over, this is going to disappear. But I was born a hustler in this business. I, I was scared to get back into the world, but now I'm, I'm no longer scared because I, back in the day before AEW, I was um, going to wrestle for basically nothing. I was just doing it because I love it. I would do three, four shows a week and I would rack up small paydays from the promoters plus my merchandise and I'd be satisfied. I'd be making a lot of money. But now my price has gone significantly up. So I didn't know if the promoters were going to welcome me back with open arms. But recently I've realized the promoters know the situation. They realize what the situation is going to be. And they've been hitting me up big time. They say, we want you to come back here. We want you to wrestle some of the newer guys we have. We, we want you to wrestle some of the older guys. We want that Joey Janela back. And I'm happy and I'm satisfied with what I did in those three years in AEW. It was a learning experience. And I'm, I'm going to say this in the most positive way possible without looking negative. AEW, those three years, was developmental for the rest of my career. Uh, I'm so much sharper now, not only in ring, but business wise, um, I've learned so much in those three years that now not only am I sharper myself in all facets of the wrestling business, but also I can go to a young guy. I can go to a Nick Wayne and teach him some of the stuff I've learned in those three years, or I can go to GCW, or I can go to a another promotion and teach them what I've learned on the other side of uh, the, the curtain. So I'm not sad at all. I did everything I wanted to do there within the six months. I started there. I, my goal was to wrestle John Moxley, Kenny Omega, main event TV, main event pay-per-view did it all. The only thing I didn't get was an action figure, which I don't know. So, so be it. It's over now, and uh, we're just moving forward. I, I, I have no complaints. I thank Tony. Uh, I just wish there were more. They've been doing this to people. They've been radio silent on the people. They are letting the, the contracts expire. That's why you have talent relations, to talk to your talent and tell them what the situation is. If they're going to have a paycheck coming in or – they're going to be signed to a per appearance deal, which some of the guys have uh, have agreed to. I would never agree on a per appearance deal anywhere. Um, my per appearance deal is going to be when I'm booking myself all over the world. I'm booked in six different countries coming up per appearance on the independent scene. I want to be my own boss. That's how I've got my name out there. I was my own boss and I had the most buzz outside of the elite. And that's why I had this opportunity at AEW. That's why I had the opportunity at 
all in. People, people say to me on the internet, they said, the only reason you worked at AEW was because you're friends with the Young Bucks. I met the Young Bucks twice before AEW. I wasn't friends because I was the, one of the most successful self-promoting wrestlers and in the world at that point. So I'm not sad about anything. I thank everyone there. I learned so much. It was, I had ups and downs, you know, COVID really killed me wrestling in front of no crowd. I really lost motivation. My back was shot out. Uh, just uh, when, when my, the, the doctors tell me my back is shaped like an S because all the wild stuff I've done in my career, you know, that's something that's scary to hear. And that's why you're not like moving the way you should at 31 years old. It's because your spine is shaped like an S, but that's been fixed. I feel great. I'm back in shape. I just wish it was, there was less radio silence on their end with me. I consider Tony a friend. I hung out with Tony a lot in the beginning days of AEW. I just wish they would talk to me. I, I, I know it's, you know, it, it's come to an end, but uh, I appreciate them. I appreciate the experience I had, and I'm going to take everything I learned there and bring it with me for the rest of my career. Was it one of those situations where, you know, you mentioned this radio silence, but just to kind of clarify, was it just them not telling you like, hey, we're going to resign you. We're thinking of resigning you. Was it them not really stating the options or just not bringing things up with you? Like where I just want to clarify that. Well, it was weird because we were doing this whole angle with Sunny Kiss uh, that I basically booked the whole thing top to bottom at it. At it. And it was hitting on all cylinders for a for their internet TV show. It wasn't on TV. People were bombarding us to put it on TV because it was so good and the emotion was there and people were into it. And people started to hate me because I turned on Sunny Kiss. I said, "Listen, Sunny, I you're over now to a degree, but I want to get you to the next level with this storyline." And uh, if I knew otherwise, I would have had Sonny Kiss go over in our final street fight in um, Universal Studios, which was a great received match. I would have had Sonny go, go over me, and I would have walked into the sunset. But I think they had plans. I mean, Tony kept on saying, after this, we're bringing you back to TV. But unfortunately, I think a lot of it has to do with uh, a situation. I wrestled Eddie Kingston in Charlotte and uh, – I, I super kicked him in the face a little bit too hard. Uh, came in a little bit too hot. I've been squatting probably 50 more pounds than I'm used to be squatting and doing a uh, hundred pounds more on the uh, leg press. And uh, I don't know. I didn't realize I had that type of power in my legs and I gave him a super kick and I broke his orbital bone. And uh, he was going into a feud with Chris Jericho. And I feel like that might have been the straw that broke the camel's back. Uh, a lot of guys, maybe some older heads that believed my hype and believed I was some kind of dangerous professional wrestler. I've had times where I've injured people. Of course, everyone has. But once you get a reputation, you know, it's hard to break that. And, uh, you know, I've had a, a, a string of bad luck throughout my AEW career and, uh, that might have been the strawberry cam camel's back, but I don't know because they don't communicate with me. Right. Like, they did the same thing to Marco Stunt. They just stopped talking to him. Uh, but I appreciate them. And, uh, you know, I just, if you have talent relations, I, I know Christopher Daniels would love nothing much, love nothing more to tell me that, that I'm uh, no longer with the company. But it is what it is. And uh, I'm not sad. I'm not mad. I'm not mad at anyone. I had a wonderful experience. I'm happy for fucking Penelope Ford who came up with me. Uh, basically, I took from, you know, she was my girlfriend at one point. And we, we, we made this thing happen from CZW Dojo Wars, which was in a storage unit somewhere in South Jersey, all the way to these bigger shows to us getting a getting a, a full-blown deal uh for three years with all the wrestling and she's doing wonderful right now and uh 
you know, I did everything I, I ever wanted there. And uh, to me, it's uh, – I'm going to make basically the same money this year doing independence, but working twice as hard um, this year. I just uh, – it's it's no big deal to me, and I I appreciate everyone there, and I appreciate uh, everything uh, I got to do, and uh, just just uh, happy right now. I'm more focused, more motivated I've ever been in my career, and uh, you can see it in my work. Uh, I've been nothing but there's been nothing but good Joey Janela matches over the last eight months, whether it be my matches that I did at AEW Dark or my GCW matches, or my match with Nick Wayne, which is arguably the best independent wrestling match of last year. I'm back to where I wanted to be, and uh, I feel 10 years younger. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to change a thing. It was great. Great times, and I'm having a great time right now. And I see it in you too, like instantly, like when I saw you at the last GCW show in LA, I like, I could see it in your face and just like the way that you like, you carry yourself. You really seem like you're kind of like, uh, you're sort of like in this, I, I feel like you're kind of like reinvented yourself in a way, like kind of like in a further extension of who the bad boy was, but just are finding like, uh, you know, new, new ways to showcase who the bad boy is. Like, I don't know if that's the right way to put it, but I can see it in your work and even just the way that you carry yourself in GCW. W, uh, et cetera. So with that being said, I think my last question for you is like, uh, we're, you know, we're just about the third month of this year. Uh, how, what is your goal? You know, you go out there and, you know, you're talking about being your own boss, which I completely agree with. Cause I think if anything, what we've learned in wrestling this like last two years is that you don't have to be signed to a major company to essentially have a full on successful career that, you know, is financially good as well. So for you, this year, maybe the next couple of years, what are some of the goals that you want to do, like, ideally? Uh, one of my goals is to really have a uh, run in Japan, which is something I wanted since I was a child. I've, re I've done shows in Japan, but I've never had, like, a steady run there. Uh, that, that will be in the works very soon. Um, I want to continue doing what I'm doing. I want to no matter what the crowd is, no matter it's a hundred people, 600 people, 3000 people, I want to give the same effort a hundred percent. Every time I want to find, I want to wrestle new talent. I want to find new talent. I'm going to bring new talent to GCW to wrestle better guys and get themselves, you know, recognized and ready for a contract somewhere, whether it be the WWE or AEW or maybe new Japan. I want to, uh, I want to wrestle, you know, three, two, three, four times a week, uh, no matter how my body feels. There's nothing more rewarding than doing an indie show and it's after your match saying, damn, I'm beat up. How am I going to wrestle tomorrow? How am I going to wrestle the next day? And then wrestling those three days and giving it your all and giving – matches that people were talking about all over the place and when you get home on that monday and you lay in your bed at nine o'clock in the morning because you haven't slept for three days and you're beat up and you sleep till eight at night I, I there's nothing more rewarding than that 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 was my favorite thing like my big indie run in 2017 2018 i would be on the road three four days a week get home on a monday go right to my bed and just pass out till nighttime, wake up, order some Chinese food, and uh, then fall back asleep. That is rewarding to me. Uh, that's more rewarding than the money. Uh, that's more rewarding than anything because I know that I did my job and I did it to the best degree I could do it to. And, uh, you know, who knows what's going to happen, you know. I don't think I'll, I'll sign another career uh, – <laughs> I'll sign another contract in my career, uh, quite personally. But who knows? Strange things have happened. And, uh, you know, I could see right now on the string of matches I've had in the last eight months and the run I've had in the last eight months, I see people that turned on me when I started to get lazy in AEW and started to get more out of shape 
And I see those people coming back. I see a lot of those fans coming back to me saying, man, I wasn't into you anymore, man. Uh, we, we, uh, but now you, you, you look focused. You, you're back in shape. You're having these great matches. And, hey, I'm going to buy, I'm gonna buy a, a T-shirt. You know, so that's that's uh, rewarding to me for all the fans that believed in me and now stopped believing in me. And now they're coming back to uh, just witness uh, another chapter in my life. And uh, it's going to be great to see where 2022 leads me because I know nothing but positive is coming my way as long as I keep focused and I stay healthy and uh, that's all. I just, I wish everyone luck, you know, I wish uh, everyone at AEW, all my friends that, uh, that I don't get to see anymore. I wish them luck, you know, and I know they feel the same about me. They know how much I love professional wrestling and how, you know, I, I love nothing more than, helping people. I put everyone in front of myself. I've always put everyone in front of myself and uh, I will continue. And uh, I just hate politics. I hate, I, I just hate the political aspects of this business, but that's every business. And that's why I'm going to be my own boss. And uh, no one's going to tell me nothing because I know I'm right. I know I'm one of the best wrestlers in the world and I need to be me a hundred percent. I can't have anyone tell me what to do, whether it be, I don't know. I don't want anyone to tell me how to wrestle, how to live my life, how to betray myself on social media. I don't want that. I am Joey Janela. This is how I got my name out there and I'm going to be Joey Janela. And this is the year that I'm going to, going to be the platform to prove that I'm one of the best hundred percent. I got to tell you, hearing you talk about everything that you're going to do and kind of like this new mental place where you're at, I just think it's so awesome. I want to thank you so much for doing this interview with me, for being so open and so honest. I really appreciate you for that. And I just want to say thank you, man. Like, thank you for doing this conversation with me. And I honestly wish you like the very best because I think you're going to kill it. And we're going to get to see, you. you know, you and Sean Waltman go one on one. I cannot wait for that. I am going to go ahead and post all of the links where you guys can buy yes. tickets go check out the show in the description box below. But other than that, Joey, uh, if you want to go ahead and plug in anything you want to plug in before we go. I just want to thank you for doing this interview with me. I had a lot on my chest. You know, there's a lot of stuff I had pent up and I was keeping to myself. And I just, I just couldn't, I couldn't hold it anymore. And I'm sure this, this interview that you're doing with me right now, it's going to get, it's going to, it's going to hit a lot of, uh, it's going to make a lot of, a lot of the sheets and whatnot as people like to uh, use my name to, for clickbait, but it is what it is and it's out there now. And uh, I just want to see everyone at spring break six mania weekend. You know, you, I'm sure you'll see me at the show. I'm sure you'll see me at the bar. I'm sure you'll see me stumbling around the streets afterwards, celebrating uh, my success that weekend and my, victory over Sean Waltman. It's going to be awesome. I will be there. I will be catching the show for sure. Uh, Joey, thank you so much. Guys, please make sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel. And again, all of the links in the description box below to support Joey Janela. Check out Spring Break, GCW, and more. Until next time, I'm Denise Salcedo. This is the bad boy Joey Janela, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye, everybody.